Oh, you think you got the Napoleon complex? Maybe. <laughs> Look, maybe I do, though. Like, you know, but I never made any school teams, like, uh, but it wasn't always just because of my, my athleticism or whatever. It was sometimes it was just because of bad behavior or grades or whatever the case is. But because of that, like, I always felt like I was left out of shit. Mm. So, like, my only way of, like, being better than somebody or, or being competitive with, with people was, like, to make something that was so creative that somebody felt like, yo, I can't make that. Mm. You know, and, like, that's kind of where I, I felt like, all right, well, this is my comfort zone. You know, I can be creative. Like, I was great in fucking language arts and shit. Sucked in all my other classes. Right. It's fucking the worst kid. But language arts, when it come to, came to writing essays and yeah. writing stories, and I was nice. Like, I was writing shit that niggas was like, yo, how you even thought of that? Like, you I know remember what I'm my SAT scores. I had, like, a high-ass, like, verbal or English component, and then my math shit was, like, terrible. Word? It's just your brain, like, I you know. I couldn't do math. I exactly. We're, I wasn't I, that we're similar. Great. I was not that great at I math. I could write a story or something, but I could, like, in terms of doing math, that shit just never really connected with I me. I definitely, definitely 100% feel you. Rappers always say that, too, though. They always say, like, I didn't do good in school, but I was good at math, as in saying, like, no. but I was good at selling niggas drugs. Niggas is lying. No. Niggas you is weren't. lying. You weren't. You're lying. All the niggas <laughs> that I know that ended up being, like, some, some, like, rap niggas or not saying they were super famous rap niggas, but all the niggas that I knew that were like trappers and niggas that, it was niggas that did anything, that had some kind of money coming out of school. Mm. All them niggas was horrible at math. And they was great at math afterwards for the basic math that they needed to count money. Mm. That's it. Niggas, niggas know how to count money and swear they know math. Right? Well, motherfuckers will get like, <laughs> like 50 you know grand and they'll get a real, money counter. <laughs> real talk, dog. Like, yo, it'd be crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? They need the money counter real early, <laughs> real early in their crazy, trapping dog. career. Like, you know. I don't know, bro. Like, I was never good at math. I was never good at school, period. I hated my fucking teachers. My teachers didn't like me. A lot of, like, I remember this one teacher, like, I'll never forget this bitch. Yo, I'm in, I'm in the hallway. I wasn't even in her class, bro. I was in the hallway, but she was a teacher who, like, knew me. Like, she, would know, she knew that I was always misbehaving and blah, blah, blah. And I was in her class. I mean, I was walking through the hallway, and she, she brought me in her class. And she was like, um... Hold on, stand in front of here. She stood me in front of the whole class, right? She knew I was skipping. Mm -hmm. she, she stood me in front of the whole class. And then she's like, yo, Crystal, come up here. And Crystal was like this girl, like, you know, straight A's, like, right. you know, did her work. So she was doing an example of the good kid and the bad kid? She brought this girl to the top of the, to the front of the class, bro. And she said... Uh, she said, everybody take a look at Crystal and take a look at Daystar. Daystar is my actual name. And she said, take a look at Crystal and take a look at Daystar. And she said, in the near future, Crystal will be the one signing Daystar's checks. Right? That's fucked up. So, and I remember, and I remember, like, I, I took it such a way, and I remember walking out of class. I walked out of school, actually. And... I stayed in school for maybe one more week after that, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I was like, yo, fuck this shit, I'm out. Right. And How the fuck is that okay for them to just shit on a little kid's dream, yeah, she man? she killed me. That's she terrible. Killed, yo, she killed me. But you know what's crazy? I swear, and I swear on everything. I ended up, uh, like, years later, probably, like, when this shit started popping, I wasn't big, big, big Tory Lanez yet, but I was selling out my own, like, 300, 400 people venues and you shit like that. Crystal? Like, no, 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 I didn't smash you Crystal. You smashed the teacher? I employed Crystal. Whoa. Yeah. She worked at our store. That's way she worked at our store for two months. And I signed her checks for two months. You know what I'm saying? The store got closed down. It wasn't the biggest fucking craziest shit. Like, yeah, we still employ Crystal. Ah. And Crystal, if you're watching this, this is not even nothing to you. You just know what happened. No right? shade. Yeah. No shade. But boom. It's funny because when she came for for to, to work. She was actually in college, mm. and she was, you know, she was like, she, I guess for the first two years that she got out of school, she never went to college, boom, ended up going to college. This is straight, this is the straight A, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. for two years, she didn't really do nothing, like, major. So when she finally started going to school and shit and realized, like, you know, money is needed and things like that, I, I met up with her. I was like, yo, I'll give Come you back a job, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for sure, like, you feel me? And she was like, yo, you know, it's funny because we made jokes about it. Like, yo, you know, it's funny, da da da. I always thought that shit was fucked up. And that's why I'm not going to hold that against you, Crystal. <laughs> but, you know, it was just one of those things where I feel like, yo, that, that was a moment that showed me in life things go back around if you just 
if you just go hard at whatever you believe in. And as cliche as that's, that is to say, it's just the fucking truth, my nigga. Mm. You know, like crazy situations, things you never thought would happen, you know, things change, bro. When I was in third grade, I was looking at like all my old shit in my mom's house and I found this fucking piece of paper, this like little art project type thing that you're supposed to do. You're supposed to write like what you want to be when you grow up. And I wrote, I want to be a rapper. And the teacher mm. wrote on it, like, Adam, you need to be more realistic. Like, you know, like that's not a serious profession, blah, blah, blah. Like totally <laughs> shitting on me. Look at me now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I still ain't rap, but you know I know a lot of rappers, so hey, take it. No, but I just I think that's the worst thing you could do that to just shit on a kid's dream. I can never imagine like, even if you really believe that the kid has no talent or Yo, some I shit, never, you're a teacher, bro. I've never even been one to do that. Like even when I know like like I've had people play me some shit, it's horrible, and then give me the mixtape. And I've seen artists do crazy shit, like throw your mixtape, or you see, like, you give a nigga a mixtape, you walk down the corner, your shit's on the floor, like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, but I've never, ever treated nobody like that. Like, I've never, even if I felt like, yo, this is shit, my nigga, like, I don't even want to hear this shit. Like, I tell a nigga, yo, keep pushing, bro. Mm. Keep pushing. Like, yeah, I don't got, I ain't got a lot of you tell you, yo, yeah, this shit fine. Like, I'm not going to do all that, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, yo, my nigga, keep pushing, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Just keep working hard, bro. Simple and plain, like, I feel like when you break somebody's dream, that might be the deciding factor of, like, what could change the world or not. The, the, you might say the wrong thing to the right mind, and that might be, you know, the end result to something that could have been great. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just a dark thing to, like, want to have a negative impact on somebody's life like that. If anything, I have a lot of guilt about the fact that so many kids pitch their fucking dreams to me in my DMs, whatever, always trying to have that conversation with me, and I realistically can't have that conversation with everybody. And that that's makes one thing, that's feel kind of dirty about that, I'm you know? I'm not going to lie. I, and it was fucked up because I always told myself, like, yo, the way these niggas did me, my nigga, when I get famous, my nigga, I promise, my nigga, I'm never going to do niggas like this, bro. But then you realize, bro, it's not even that niggas mean to do you. Like, there's just so much mm. that I can't process as a all human, that. Yeah. But I cannot process all of this. I can see what sticks out. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I see what sticks out, and I'll click it from time to time and listen to what all I can do. But it's like sometimes you just don't. You realistically don't have the time to do certain things. What are you on musically at this point in your life outside of your own shit? I'm sure you listen to your own shit a lot. Like what 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 is the kind of shit that, that you personally gravitate towards musically? Um what have I been listening to lately? Like to be in it, to be uh, like hundred percent honest with you, and I don't mean to sound, you know, like boasty or some weird shit, but like I've been recording this Love Me Now shit and like because it has so many other artists on it. I'm kind of, I've been kind of happy with that. Like, mm. it's like, and I don't mean to like try to shamelessly plug in my shit, but it's just like, that's literally all I really been listening to. And I'm trying to think now, like, what have I, like, you know, like, what, what have I been listening to? It's like, of course, the Wayne shit, mm. the Wayne shit drop. Um, was that was that exhilarating for you? That was, that was great. Crazy, man. Great to see him back. That was crazy. It's <laughs> like, ah, oh, oh, this nigga came back in a major way, and it almost made me feel like. I, I know it was go like me as a fan. I felt like, oh, okay, Wayne. So you was just you was just hiding the you was just hiding the good records because you was waiting to get off Cash Money. You're like like okay, Save cool, up for my five nigga. Years. Like say less. I, I knew I never doubted you. You know what I'm saying? Like I was never one of the niggas who doubted. So like for 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 him to come back crazy after I told niggas for years, like you gotta understand how I felt. Like as yeah. a fan, bro, like yo, I told niggas Wayne was gonna come crazy again, nigga. And it was always supposed to be like, oh, look at all these young new rappers. They're the one. They're the reason why Lil Wayne is not gonna be popping anymore. It's because of Young Thug. It's because of Uzi. Blah blah blah. And then in reality, it comes out that like Wayne could take a five year break and, I just and come say, back and I just go crazy. Because we all know Jumper Man. You know what I'm saying? Like. We actually, we actually got the the first opportunity to to to, to work together, and, and and something great came out of it. You and Wayne. Yeah. Really. He remixed one of the one of the songs on uh on the project. The the new project. Yes, sir. Holy shit! So did you know how that happened, or you sent yeah. it to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. We connected the dots. Shout out GP in the building. Shout out Stevie J and Mac, and everybody who helped out. That's crazy. When when are you gonna hear that? We're gonna hear that on the project gonna hear it very soon i'm gonna add it to the project because i couldn't clear it in time it just recently just happened really but yeah we're that's gonna, exciting we're gonna release it soon hell yeah yeah that's crazy GP in the corner like yo man why he <laughs> that, that was supposed to be secret info <laughs> fuck that bro it's coming out in a couple days man it's lit like you know what i'm saying it's lit 
No, you got you got to drop the little jewels in the interview because then the other media outlets will be like, that's a reason to talk about this interview is to be like, look at this one little jewel. If you drop one jewel in each interview, that's like my this is just my strategy for artists. Is like then each interview could like go viral from you know. I mean, but me, I just I'm more so just excited at the fact that you know that's one of my favorite artists growing up and yeah, you know, I got to work with him. It's like, crazy you know like, seeing him come come up again with this album and shit is crazy as fuck because it's like, oh, like, it's a, it's a nice reminder that, like, the real talent and shit will shine through at the end of the day. And yeah. I feel like as much as rap sometimes, you know, it goes through cycles where people love to, like, say that it's all, it's all ringtone rap or lately it's, oh, it's just SoundCloud rap, blah, blah, blah. It's just bullshit. And it's like, you know, th there is some truth to that, I think, sometimes, but it's nice when you see, like, somebody who's able to, like, but, but I don't even have that doubt because when you look at rap now, it's like a lot of the dudes who sell the most are really the dudes who have like the illest skill set, so they actually are really, really and good. And that's the thing, like I think that at times people forget, and that's why I never get mad at like who's the, like if I'm, if I'm not dropping music, and it's a time where I'm off season, I'm not upset about who's, you know, like who's uh, dropping shit or who's like. For me personally, it's like a situation where when I make music and I'm in in and it comes down to a standpoint, like all I care about is is just the 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 the, the people listening to it. Like I don't care about all of the extras that go into it, you feel me? And like sometimes and not to just change the subject, but like me personally, I feel like even with certain artists, artists who they say are like SoundCloud rappers or you, what is a SoundCloud rapper? Like, it, cause I remember a lot of niggas popping off SoundCloud that weren't, you know, that you know, no, no similarities. Shit, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I feel like we forget when this popping nigga is popping or this trendy nigga is popping, there's still Kendricks, there's still Coles, mm -hmm. still Kanye's and Drake's and people that are racking in numbers that are just like world record numbers. And it's because the music is still, that's what people, you grow out of a, out of trendy shit. Mm. You grow out of trendy shit, and unless that trendy person changes his music into something that is not relatable to people his own age group, eventually it gets to a point where it's like we grow out the trend, mm. grow out whatever it was that was exciting us because we get older and the, you know it's natural as humans when you see the same thing it's it's it slowly stops exciting you. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like real music always prevails. And that's why I never really get upset. All of these dudes who pop, they came from a standpoint where they had to pass this same level that, it, that I'm at, or this same level where you're at. Right. Everybody who's popping had to pass that level at some point. They had to stand exactly where you were standing. And when they were standing there, they're regular people too. They still had the same doubts, the same insecurities that you may have, you feel me? So it's like at the end of the day, look at it that way and just keep excelling, bro. That's it. Definitely. Yo, I was just looking at the list of questions I got from readers, and this, yeah, this, this one stood out to me. Favorite Halloween memories? Favorite. Any good costumes that we need to know about or anything in particular yeah. you might have done as a kid or anything? Um, I definitely was Joel Santana. Whoa. And um, You kind of still are with that jacket. Right? I could see him in that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always, I always keep a fly jacket on. No, I feel like the hard. only, and, and no pun intended, but I feel like the only artist that could fuck with me when it comes to jackets and like crazy jackets is Cameron. There's no other mm. artist I feel like is out here that's just coming with this crazy. Every time you see me, I got some crazy statement jacket on. Like he changed rap fashion to a crazy different level. He, with, different. he did so he much different. shit. He's definitely different. You feel me? Joel Santana's funny though, because you being him back in the day, I you just got to get like a four X shirt. Bro, I ironed my bandana so. Mm. Long, I, yo, bro, I could not get the, the shit to be crisp on my... I had to staple that shit at one point. I tried to get that shit so crisp. I ironed it and I stapled it, nigga. And it was still not as crisp. And it had me thinking to myself, like... Fuck was this nigga doing his bandana, my nigga? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the fuck was this nigga doing, bro? Like, real shit. If you're gonna be Joel's, you gotta get, like, a fitted hat that's, like, four fucking sizes too big. And then you gotta put it yeah, over your ears. Yo. And, yo, you gotta have, like, some big ears. It's, look, look, look. They go to picture right there. <laughs> they go to oh, you can't show them the picture. Let me see. I'll can't put show them the picture. Oh my god, this is too real. Look at that. <laughs> dip set, dip set, dip set. Yo, I even oh got the. Oh my god. Fire. 
<laughs> that was Word. such a dope era. And, you know, I could confirm, I was living in New York at that time, that you really would be just, like, walking around and just see dudes with their hats so big, just over their ears. And I'm just, I always had a big-ass head. I couldn't even, like, I could barely wear the hats that were, like, the biggest hats that they had in the store because my head was so big. So I had to go and, like, order, like, an eight and a quarter on fucking no, eBay crazy. or some shit. That's crazy. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoyed this throwback clip. If you did, show some support. Like comment, subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com if you want to support, or go on over to Snapchat and just search No Jumper. There's a link in the description. We've had our news show dropping a couple times per week, and I swear you're gonna love it. Balling like an athlete, but got No Jumper. Appreciate y'all.